Hello, everybody, and welcome to the back room at Gord's Running Store here in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. And as of lately, we're still stuck in a bit of a deep freeze and we're constantly getting asked as far as how do I take care of the extremities, being hands or your feet. So I'm going to start with the feet first. And a few suggestions we like to make are uh, starting with socks. If um, a lot of times people, they typically have the low uh, collar type socks and just finish right at the top of the shoe that exposes your ankle to a lot of uh, um, direct uh, contact with the elements so we strongly encourage just going to a slightly longer sock for some people it could be just a quarter sock two inches this one would be a four inch sock this would be again about a six inch sock and then we do have their classic wool type sock the big thing with them when the person does go to a more of a of a synthetic sock um, is making sure that they accommodate the space for the sock thickness. Like if a person wanted to make sure they're going to stay absolutely toasty warm and cozy, this is definitely a, a thick warm sock, but it does take up a lot of space inside your shoes. So if you fit your shoe for a regular summertime run and you try putting this in there, chances are you're going to cut off circulation by, by squeezing your foot too tightly. So there's a few ideas as far as on the socks and what, what I like to recommend. The um, footwear, <clears throat> perhaps this was your classic training shoe you've done a lot of your miles in. It's a lightweight, fast type neutral cushion shoe. Um, but the upper of this is also lightweight. The wind goes through there very, very easily, very quickly. Some people say, yeah, I, I just got to get my miles in. I really love that shoe and how it performs, but it does give me grief when I go in on a bit of a colder day. And if there's a bit of wind out, it's, it's really painful on my feet to go beyond that 45 minutes. So a couple of things you could do. Some people I've seen, they've actually taped the upper of the shoe with duct tape to help close it off. Some people they want to doctor their shoe up too much and don't want to make it look too much like a Star Wars type character. Um, so another more discreet way is take your typical produce bag. And once you've had your sock on, and you basically put your foot into that produce bag and then you put your foot inside the shoe this will give you that wind barrier protection on there the drawback with it if it's a little bit uh, on the warmer side out there your foot's going to perspire and your foot's going to get a little wetter that being said you want to make sure the sock that's on next to your foot is some form of synthetic so it's trying to pull that moisture away and keep it on the exterior side of the sock from that perspective so again, that's in a pinch what a person can do. Um, if you have at your disposal, um, some of the trail shoes, they have a little bit more of an aggressive grip for traction and durability that way. Um, the uppers of some of the trail shoes are a little bit denser weave as far as the mesh goes. That being said, the wind is less apt to go through there. So it tends to work not too badly and you don't have to pay a premium as far as going for a Gore-Tex or waterproof type characteristic. Um, today in Calgary, uh, it's the forecast, the high is like minus 19. Um, and this morning when I walked to work, it was minus 22 and a bit. That was my shoe that I walked to work with. Basically the, the men's 880 road running shoe, but it's a Gore-Tex upper. And again, the wind doesn't go through there. So it was a you know, totally comfortable shoe. The soft midsole still stays fairly pliable and flexible underfoot so again that sort of thing could be a good shoe for some people uh, or having a Gore-Tex upper on it would be a good thing as far as just preventing the wind from going through. Lastly within the shoe categories you want to make sh absolutely sure you're going to get cushioning, get grip. This one actually has the ice spikes on the outsole. They're an actual studded type shoe. It's from Ice Bugs. And this one is a Gore-Tex upper as well. So you got the best of a whole lot of worlds. You got the wind and the rain and the snow is not going to get through the shoe. The upper of the shoe or the midsole of the shoe is very cushioned. Um, so you're taking care of all those, all those sort of boxes, ticking off all those boxes, all in one fell swoop with one shoe. Now, when I go to my hands, I'm going to go start with, I find in the running community, I get two types of people. <laughs> yeah, that's it, just two types of people. People who get warm hands easily and people who get cold hands easily. And the people who get warm hands easily, 
this glove might be all that they need as far as their winter running needs. And what it is, is just a light synthetic glove. It does have a little bit of a synthetic layer to give you a little bit of insulating factor. If the weather is a little bit inclement or a little bit cold for these people, then they might pull out the outer portion and they'll put that around their fingers. And that little bit of layer, it just helps hold in that little bit of warmth that your hand is creating while you're out there. And that's, again, a windproof, waterproof, does have reflectivity from visibility perspective and also the bright yellow is highly visible. So some people wear this, believe it or not, in today's type weather, they'll run into the wind with this glove on. Then when they turn around, now they're running back and the wind's at their back, they'll take it off because their hands are getting so hot and warm. So, so to me, some people go that route. Um, next option would be just a, a mitt. And the reason I like to suggest a mitt for some people, if you're gonna, if you're gonna point a finger at somebody and then say that that person is one of those people who get cold hands easily, that's me. I get cold hands easily. So a mitt, all your fingers are together, working together to keep themselves warm. Um, so on the colder days, I'll even take my thumb out of the thumb hole and I'll even put it inside like that, just to help keep all five uh, of those guys together to keep themselves warm. This one is a wind water re resistant on the back. And again, a highly reflective on the back side as well. Surprisingly very warm, warm mitt with, with this one. Um, so there's that possibility. Solomon does one very, very similar idea with it. They do basically it has a, a little bit more insulation than what the Segoy one did, but you can take your fingers out. So it has the, the ability to take your fingers out for fiddling with your keys or answering a phone call from that perspective. You can pull it over to protect them, keep them warm as well. So again, it has a, a fairly nice insulated type uh, mitt to wear. If I remember correctly, Ryan does use one of these pairs of mitts. So he may give you a few points on his, his pers uh, perspective on it. Um, some people, one of our warmest mitts we do from Nofell. Um, it's just a big padded, more insulated type mitt. The insulated mitt is like the insulated walls of your house. They're the really thick walls, has more airspace, has a little bit more warming quality on it. So that is what uh, some people go to as far as our so-called warmest running mitt. Personally, I go to a mitt that I do, we don't even sell, but I do strongly recommend if you get the cold hands easily. I would start off with something like this underneath, which is my nice liner type glove. This might be tucked in this way. And then I'll put that underneath my, what looks like my big expedition mitt. And now my hands are warm from minus 15, minus 20, and not getting any sort of issues as far as the cold hands, and that sort of thing. If I had to, I could put a heavier layer in there if needed, but I usually find that works quite well from my perspective. So the, um, so the gloves, some people get cold hands easily, like me, some people get warm hands easily. And even sometimes the really simple glove works immensely well through most of the season for those folks. And then a lot of people are sort of in that between zone of uh, where mitts work well, and maybe a mitt with a light liner will work a little bit better for them. So those are a few ideas from your footwear up to your gloves and your hands for your extremities. Hopefully that helps keep you a little bit more comfortable when the weather gets a little bit too cold for most folks to just go outside and you still want to get your workout in. Thanks a lot. Uh, we're getting very close with our Gord's Running Store website, so keep posted on that. And I look forward to hearing from you. If you have any ideas or, or wants and needs to be reviewed on, the, on Ryan's uh, little vlog here. Thank you, take care and have a great day.